What's your funniest memory from high school? Two kids were posturing, wanting to fight. Neither had even been in a fight in school before. One of the kids had never done that chest bumping thing. He kept ramming his crotch against the other kids. It was a rhythmic unintentional grind that went on for about 10 seconds until a security guard came and broke it up. Secretly, I thought I was the only person to notice it. Then, the next day, everybody was making fun of it. I guess it was way more obvious than I thought. We blasted a PR1 female orgasm track over the speakers in the auditorium while the principal was giving a speech to everyone about graduation procedures. I filmed it too. Edit, this is how we did it for everyone who asked. So, the night before we knew we had an assembly at 8.30 a.m. We then burned a CD with only two tracks. The first track was an hour of blank nothing. The second track was the MP3 of the Orgasm Girl. We managed to get the keys to the audio booth and snuck in early before school started. We turned on all the speakers and cranked them to full blast. We put the CD in and hit play so we knew exactly what time the second track would come on. I brought my digital camera BC back in 2007 RS flip phones could barely take videos. Then as the countdown began I turned on the camera and hit record right when the orgasm came on. It's not a great film job BC, I didn't want to get caught. I hope you all enjoyed it, I know my class did. So there I am. 16, kissed a girl once, loved RuneScape and had just read an extensive guide to seducing girls on a popular free skiing website the week before going on a cruise to Bermuda and planned on putting my newfound knowledge to use. It was the third night, right around midnight where everyone is drunkenly flipping through the seven channels available on the cabin TVs before bed. I was walking around the deserted top deck of the ship with my lady counterpart of like four days, serious business for a cruise, and I was ecstatic. Only hours earlier we were in my room making out and I touched my first boob, so I was super FYA, and she was all OMG were perfect red heart we end up coming up to some ropes blocking off the front of the ship for the night, and we both knew there was lots of face eating on the other side of that rope, so we went. And it was perfect. Low, ambient lighting, one open beach chair, and right under the only light on the very tip of the ship. In the end, S went wild, five minutes of me being surprised how long I was lasting and I was thrust into the realm of manhood. Or prawn. The next morning I thought I kept noticing people smirking at me, and even got two random high fives. I thought everyone was just really friendly or something till one of the guys I was playing oversized checkers with one of the earlier nights told me I was the man, so I had to ask. Turns out, every TV in the ship has a channel called the Balkan, and it was simply a live feed of the front of the ship. Oh. TLDR lost my virginity in front of up to 3,000 people. One night it was me, my friend Mark Asterisk and my friend James Asterisk hanging out at my house. Mom was working third shift, and when we got bored, strange things happened. We were outside and my friend James gets the idea that Mark should run down the street ass naked. He refuses. I tell him come on man, it's like 3am, nothing is going to happen. To be fair, I really thought nothing would happen. We lived in a very small town in the south. F airs were asleep. So after much arguing, we finally talk him into it. There he is, completely naked, save for a pair of black Chuck Taylors. We walk down my driveway, and into the street. We're like just jogged to the end of the street, and then jog back. We're laughing uncontrollably at this point. Now it's of note, that I lived on a hill, and when he jogged away, at one point he jogged out of sight. One minute we see him running down the hill naked, then for a brief moment he's out of sight. Then all of a sudden he comes back into sight, running towards us, no longer jogging, but sprinting. Full speed. See and balls flapping in the wind. And behind him is a police car driving after him. He jetted past us without so much as acknowledging our presence. I knew we were all in a lot of trouble, but I was half immobilized on the ground because I was laughing so hard, as was James. The cop, of course, caught up to Mark. He made Mark walk along the side of the car back to my house, got out and told us he was going to take all three of us and for all kinds of s. He let Mark put his clothes back on. I actually was pretty sure we were going downtown. Instead he just writes all of our names down and calls our parents the next day. Jamie and Mark got grounded. My mom asked what happened, and I told her, and she too, couldn't stop laughing. One day in sophomore year a guy in our last class of the day gets a phone call right in the middle of the lecture. He pulled out his phone said hold on I gotta take this to the look of utter shock on everyone's faces. Then he goes what? Really? Hangs up stands up and goes duty calls and rips his shirt off to reveal a superman costume underneath cane and boots and everything. He take off and starts running around in the hall. We saw him run by twice with the school cop in chase. He ended up hiding the rest of class in a bathroom. And got a week suspension. So. Worth. It.
It was a pep assembly, with a guy slash girl team representing each grade in a competition in front of the whole school. The premise was pretty simple, the guy is blindfolded, and the girl talks them through an obstacle course that isn't really there. Some of each class came down to the floor for a closer look. I don't remember how I was supposed to end because... The sophomore guy was pretty large and awkward. At the end of the course she shouts, okay, now just run straight. He takes off lumbering across the gym, into his own classmates, who all part like the Red Sea, and then barrels ass over tea kettle into the bleachers, which caught him at the shin and sent him up a few rows. I still can't believe nobody was filming, but it was in the days before smartphones. That kid became a legend, but I imagine it sucked at first. Here's to you, big kid I never knew the name of. So it was grade 9, and there was this shy kid that everyone either picked on or left alone, as if he didn't exist. He was a weird kid, but he wasn't bothering anyone or anything and I didn't really know him at all besides his name. One day, we're in science class and he sat in a desk next to me and the teacher calls him up for a presentation. He looks over at me and says the only three words he ever said to me, this is bad and walks up to the front of the class with a huge erection and that shitty thin material that schools used for gym shorts. I'm in shock and everyone is like what? And this kid just stood there and ripped off a 10 minute presentation with this boner. It was so messed up at the time, but we still laugh about it now 10 years later. My friend set up two WWE wrestling figurines in the hallway and we all made a circle around them yelling yeah. Kick his ass. Get him. Fight fight fight. The principal and a few male teachers came sprinting down the hallway to break up the fight. The looks on their faces were hilarious. I'm still in tears laughing about it. As a pre-freshman, as in the summer before, I started helping out as a student trainer. Helping all the football guys strek, ice, tape, deliver Gatorade. Every football player from freshman to varsity knew me. School starts, and a senior in one of my classes, Spanish, started giving me shit, calling me water boy, stupid things like that. Our first pep assembly is held, as the entire school walks out of the gym, that senior stops me in the main hall, and pulls out a penny, a crowd gathers as he is yelling about how this freshman is about to push a penny. Just as he turns back to face me, the entire varsity defensive line walks up, picks the guy up by his arms, and walks him out the back of the school. Everyone is in shock, as the QB turns to me and says let me know if someone tries to treat you like a freshman. I don't know what happened outside. But the guy never said a word to me, and would cross to the other side of the hall if he saw me from that day on. There was a very crotchety, in her mid-sixties, librarian in my high school. She'd yell at kids for eating or using their phones or making too much noise. One time there were a group of kids gathered around a computer laughing loudly. She starts to march over and asks what's so funny. A smart ass kid replied, honestly, with black jokes. Black jokes, she says angrily. Then without breaking stride, she adds I love black jokes. There was this tiny, white, goth kid I knew back in high school. Anyhow, he used to say terrible things all the time just to get a rise out of people. One day I am sitting at lunch with him when a very large crowd of black people come up and fill in around him. Head of mob says, I hear you don't like black people very much. To which he replies no, I f love and asterisk rs. Direct quote. Many pants were shat. I had never seen that many people move that quickly before. Skinny low bastard managed to slip out and make it to safety, too. When I was in school, our band program was new and still very small. Sometimes we'd have chill days, especially after football season ended, where we would just play around in the band hall. One day, some of the boys decided to gang up on our band director, a young, slight, 24 to 25 year old man, and try to wrestle him. This one kid who, even at 14 or so was built like a linebacker, snuck up on the director and tried to jump on his back. The director noticed at the last second, grabbed the kid's wrist, and straight up flipped him over his back and slammed him to the floor like a fucking pro wrestler. He stood up all wide-eyed and half-smiling, not sure if he should be proud of himself or submitting his resignation for flipping a student. The landing knocked the wind clean out of the kid. Everyone else thought it was hilarious and applauded. They never messed with him again. As a junior in high school, I have been taking a few packs of saltine crackers from the cafeteria each lunch and putting them in my locker. The plan is to do something spectacular for a senior prank with all of the crackers. Anyways, my locker doesn't completely shut and can swing open if someone pulls on it. So I was sitting in the hall one day when nobody at all was there. My teacher and his little kids came into the hall and out of all the lockers, the kid pulls on mine. The saltines flood out everywhere and my teacher just gets the most confused look on his face. I hid my smile and to this day he has no idea why a locker was full of crackers. It's funny to me at least. Edit, if anyone has any idea of what to do with the crackers, share your devious plans. 
My high school cafeteria was set up such that there was the option for the regular school lunch, rectangle pizza, chicken nuggets, etc., of course, but they also provided an a la carte line where you could get candy, chips, drinks, basic junk food, and a few other things. Both of these options were pretty heavily used. At some point, someone in administration decided it would be a good idea to get a milk machine for the cafeteria. It was just a vending machine covered in a cow pattern that sold milk and other dairy products like yogurt and string cheese. I don't know what it was about this milk machine, but it was the principal's pride and joy. You'd see him every once in a while, walking by and admiring the products within, with a look on his face that said he was proud of what he had done for the students. The thing is, none of the students ever used it. That milk machine went untouched for the simple reason that getting your milk or cheese or whatever was cheaper at the la carte line. Everyone knew the setup and stuck with it. One day, the school was host to a regional choir festival. This meant that a number of choirs from schools around the area all came to mind to perform. These choir students, of course, got a lunch break. This is when the magic happened. All of us were sitting at our tables, enjoying our lunches, when we noticed something. This kid. This kid from another school. This kid from another school who didn't know the story behind the milk machine and how the a la carte line was cheaper. He had no clue, he just wanted some milk. And he went to get it, from the milk machine. Everyone stopped talking, stopped eating, just watched this kid. Was it really happening? Was the milk machine actually going to be used? We waited. Oblivious to the watchful eyes around them, he went for it. This kid, in an unfamiliar school, surrounded by unfamiliar people, put in his money, punched in the number, and he got his milk. We were stunned. We were amazed. We were in awe. We did what I argue anyone would have done in this situation, we applauded. A few tables at first with just a few claps, soon became a wave of riotous applause that swept over the entire cafeteria. Students leapt to their feet, a standing ovation for this boy who defied all odds and used the milk machine. T.H.S. Kid, unsurprisingly, was taken aback. He looked around, confused, and once he realized that everyone was in fact applauding him, he took a little bow and scurried off. I'm going to go with what happened to my best friend in our junior year of high school. He had been dating this girl for about a month and she was pretty preppy and conservative. Anyway, one day after school he calls me to tell me what had just happened between them. Apparently they were doing 69 and she was on top. She started shaking and what not about to have an orgasm so he said he started going at it extra hard. She lets out a huge scream and sh all over his face. He was pretty terrible at keeping secrets especially of embarrassing things that happened to himself for some reason. Anyway the whole school knew by the end of the week and his nickname for the remainder of high school was S-Face. Year was 2007, 5th period, history class. I was sitting in the front row with a clear view of the hallway. It was a mundane lecture until, out of the corner of my eye, I see a moderately attractive classmate walking in the hallway. Two seconds later she intersects with her friend. All of a sudden her friend pants her, she trips and does a face plant. I burst out laughing but, to my horror, no one else noticed. As a result, I was pegged the dude who started randomly laughing during a holocaust lecture. Sigh. This is funny now that I think of it, but at the time it happened it was quite embarrassing. I was put on the chair leading class by mistake at the beginning of 10th grade. It was glorious at first because I was the only guy in the middle of 20 plus beautiful girls all in tights dancing around me. However, I started getting bored from sitting on a corner all class till the bell rang and started playing with my left nipple for some reason without even noticing. Till I saw like five of those beautiful girls looking at me and laughing, then it hit me, I was holding my nipples with the tips of my fingers. One of my friends got into a verbal argument with his little sister, also a high schooler, in front of like 50 other students. He was so flustered and pissed off that when he tried to say, I'm gonna kick your F ass, he said, I'm gonna F you up the ass, instead. Little sister was so embarrassed she wasn't even mad anymore. Ten years later we all give him S for it still. Even his wife laughs about it used in another post, but same thing. I was in pre -cal back in high school my class had this loud girl who was pregnant and would sit in the back complaining about being in that form. After our test I pull out my Yu-Gi-Oh cards and start going through them because I had a match against a friend after class. This girl walked by me and said loudly, you still play with Yu-Gi-Oh cards? I looked her dead in her eyes and said calmly, you're pregnant. The whole class lost it and she almost punched me in the face. She tried making a comeback but I was too busy making that sweet deck. As a junior at a Catholic school I had to take morality class. Basically it was a class that described the church's stances on modern social issues. Well one day we were talking about sexting and father was describing the characteristics he saw whenever stuff like that was brought to the school's attention. He told the class when girls sext, they're usually full body nudes and they're smiling. 
When boys sext it's usually just a picture of their junk and nothing else. The golden moment came when my friend blurted out you know what they say father, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Father was known for having a good sense of humor and he thanked my friend for having the witty comment of the year. We had open lunch in my high school, so we could leave campus by car and go eat at a fast food place. One day I went to lunch with one friend who was white, like me, and two friends who were Middle Eastern. Two of us wanted Wendy's and two of us wanted Taco Bell, so we decided to get Wendy's at the drive through and take that to Taco Bell where we would all eat. We walk into Taco Bell with the Wendy's bags and a guy behind the counter says, Sorry guys, we can't allow foreign bags in here, to which I responded, Hey, don't call my friend's bags. My senior year, I found that if you look above the drop ceiling in the upstairs men's bathroom, there is a huge, like 12 plus foot high, cave. You could climb on pipes, the tops of walls, etc. to navigate through most of the second floor. So naturally, my friends and I would take opportunities to explore this newfound space. In order to get up there, you would have to occupy the handicapped stall and stand on the rails, move a tile aside, and pull yourself up. Because a variety of people, including snitches and teachers, used this restroom, secrecy was important. So we always replaced the tile while exploring. This, as you could imagine, made getting down problematic if there wasn't a watchman. We actually got stuck up there for an hour after we lost track of who was in the bathroom. The absolute best, and last, experience with this happened early one morning. A friend and I were feeling bold, and went exploring without a spotter. We, predictably, get caught up there. I should mention how amplified sound gets while you're up there, so our stifled giggles were incredibly obvious. Whoever was in there called out hello, in a very creeped out way. We compose ourselves, and wait for him to leave. A short while later, we hear the door. So, with haste, I go back to the entrance tile, and remove it. Oh, F, creeped out kid is standing there, in horror, as he sees me remove the tile from the ceiling. I can see him through the crack in the stall. He puts his hands up, walks backwards into the wall with urinals, and practically runs out the door. My friend and I get out of there immediately. Later that day, rumors start to spread about some guy watching people use the bathroom. Some got as crazy as to say he was in the walls, and had removed a brick to spy through. All the bathrooms are locked, the police show up. Apparently the school went on some sort of alert, they thought some creepy guy was fapping to teenage boys taking S. My friend and I spent the day thinking we were getting expelled. In the end, the creep, me and my friend, were never caught, and they installed these little tabs in all the drop ceilings, making them impossible to get into without breaking the tabs and making it obvious. Eventually the whole school learned the real story, and pretty much everyone knew who was involved, including a few teachers. It eventually added up to nothing but a great story. My friends and I ordered pizza and had it delivered to the school. When it arrived all the teachers were so upset trying to figure out how we did such a thing. And with all the fussing going on me and my friends are sitting there eating our pizza and one of the cool teachers walks up and asks if he could have a piece. We give him one, we all share a laugh and do it again a couple of weeks later. Went to a Catholic high school. During mass, my friend took the Eucharist and walked back to his seat with it. While we were all quietly praying, he looked over at us with the Eucharist broken in half and made to look like fangs. He let out a very loud a g n n n n g g g, which made us all laugh uncontrollably. We all got in trouble, and Jesus' fangs was talked about constantly after that. I still remember this, and it was over 12 years ago. My friend and I are in the locker room after gem and I'm chewing gum. I see a trash can on the other side of the locker room, and I obviously tell my friend I can spit the gum into the trash can from where we are. Well, as I'm getting ready to spit, the football players walk in from practice right between me and the trash can. It was too late. I spit the gum and watched, in slow motion, as it flew across the locker room and hit one of the football players square in the eye. The next moments were a blur. What the F was that? The football player who had been hit in the eye exclaimed. Did I just step and gum? Said the one behind him. My friend and I exchanged glances before the football players could calculate the trajectory of where the gum came from and hightailed it out of the locker room as fast as we could. As soon as we were safe we were rolling on the floor laughing. The series of events could not have played out any worse had we tried. It was hilarious, and still to this day, we are both 28. I text my friend and say did I just step in gum? Edit, I accidentally gave a football the ability to talk. During the last week of my senior year, a group of friends and I wanted to keep the senior prank tradition alive. So we gathered up TP, saran wrap, and other mischievous items from our local store. Our plan was to sneak into the school at a late hour and wreck the entire commons. Earlier that day we taped some of the door hinges, thinking it was a brilliant idea, but when we arrived at the school that night all the doors were locked. The custodians probably check ever do when they lock them. 
So after almost giving up, we found an unlocked door behind a gated area in the back of the school near the kitchen. So we all went inside and made sure to put on the hoods of our sweatshirts to mask our identity from the cameras everywhere in the school. We were not smart kids. For the rest of the night, we moved everything around, stacked all the chairs and tables in the middle, saran wrapped everything, peed in cups and placed them in the hall, wasn't my idea, and TP'd the whole place. It was awesome. The next day at school it was almost all taken down. The freaking custodians cleaned it so quick. But we were all still pretty proud of ourselves. However, the principals at our school were onto us. They gave us death stares between classes and eventually called us to their office. We were all pretty frightened at this point. About six of us sitting in the office with the principals and the on-site policemen just staring at us. They then proceed to tell us that they know it was us and they have it on camera. They told us it was a breaking and entering and a pretty serious crime. They also say that we are without a doubt going to be in extreme trouble. Telling us that we are walking a graduation and will probably have some jail time, which sounds ridiculous now, but at the time we were scared as ever. By the end of it we were almost in tears. They had the police car waiting outside for us and everything. So as we are sitting there, the principal stands up, looks at us, and says, Oh, and by the way, don't ever try to prank us, cause we'll get you right back. They all then proceeded to laugh hysterically at us. We couldn't believe they had got us so good. For a few minutes we were all still in shock, but after a while it turned out to be pretty freaking funny. They said it was one of the best pranks they've seen from the students, so they had to top it. What about you? Write your story in comment section. And don't forget subscribe to our channel. Right now.